Hi everyone, welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. This is Melanie and it's the end of November and I wasn't going to do too many more organization videos for the rest of this year, but I was thinking about how I wanted to approach next year and I'm always thinking about organization and making my place more efficient and effective and I thought what I would do is do a little mini series here before the end of the year and talk about my thought process and show you how I'm going to approach next year. And if you want to play along with me and do something similar, I think that would be a lot of fun, especially if you share with me your thought process and what you're doing. So I'm just panning around the room here because the first thing I wanted to do is just do a brain dump, if you will, of what's going on in my craft room and just kind of giving you some highlights. So I've been crafting up a storm and this is what my room is looking like at this point. I am not a neat crafter. I've tried, I am 47 years old. I don't think it's gonna happen. When I get creative, I go to town <laughs> and stuff gets everywhere and that's okay, I can live with that. When I'm done, and not necessarily done a particular project, but when I'm done, I put stuff away and I start all over again. Okay, that being said, there are things that I think I can tweak and make better. And a lot of that has to do with knowing who you are, how you approach things and what your organization style is. So I'm actually quite happy with the way this room looks at this point. It's not perfect <laughs> and it needs to be cleaned up, but I have floor space so I can still walk around the room. It doesn't look like it, but I do have some desk space. I'm in the middle of uh, doing another project there. If that's not already up, it should be coming soon. And most things look not too bad. You know, this shelf over here, sorry for that, this shelf here looks really good. This shelf over here. looks really good. I've got my punches and stuff over here that work, look really good. My closet actually even looks pretty decent. So let's just do a quick survey and I'm going to point out things that I'm not happy with and we'll go from there. I've got empty bins and containers. I need to do something with those. This is very typical for me after I create create things. I store whatever I pulled out in bins and then every now and then I go and put them back. I'm okay with that. This here are purchases that need to be sorted and put wherever. I'm okay with that. That's a system that works for me. This is a leftover unit from my previous craft room configuration. I'm using it for some storage. I've got empty bins, more empty bins. I've got my other big shot back there. I'm not thrilled with this. It's, it's okay, but I think I can improve upon this. My desk I like to have clean for the most part with only a few items, but like I said, I am in the middle of crafting, so I will clear this at some point. I'm not too worried about it right at this moment. Okay, let's look at the shelf of stamps. Other than, you know, a few little things that just need to be put back into place, this has functioned very, very well for me. I added these extra shelves in here recently to store things like my paper pads, my watercolor paper pads, mixed media, that kind of thing. That's worked really well. This shelf here has also worked really well, although I think some of these things I could put into more long-term storage. I very rarely use the scanner, so why is it in prime real estate? So those are things that I need to think about. I have some decorative stuff here. I think this is overflowing, so I need to deal with that. I have some shelves I recently put up that aren't finished. I need to deal with that. My inks cube storage is perfect. I like the decorations on top. I'm very happy with that. I'm not thrilled with having pa uh, piles on top of these. So they definitely need to go. And some of them are legit. These are projects I've been working on. This was for a video that I scratched. I was going to do a video on different glues and I'm not happy with my approach on that. So 
I'm probably going to scratch the video, but if you guys are interested in all the different glues out there, pros, cons, all that good stuff, let me know below and maybe I will resurrect it. I have three carts. It's actually too many. <laughs> I struggle with these Razcog carts, so I need to rethink that. I don't like that this stuff starts to pile on top. That means this system is not working for me. But for the most part, it's tucked in out of the way. I'm okay with that. I do love my Tim Holtz cart. It's got bins, works great. I think it still needs a little bit of tweaking, but it's functional. This shelf here works pretty good for the most part. I do have a few cubes like this one here and this one down here that I think I can repurpose but for better use. So that's just something I have to think about. I have another cart. <laughs> I tried to make this work. I want to make this work. I don't think it's working. So I need to think about how I can move the stuff that I have stored here now someplace else and what I can do to make this more functional. If I get rid of this cart, then having three carts will still work because I can move the extra cart over in there. So anyways, I got to think about it. So either Razcog cart's got to go, I think, or this one. So we're going to have to play with that at some point in the new year. I have a bin down here for scraps and paper. I'm good with that. That's a system that works for me. Um, when I'm finished a project, I just dump whatever scraps and stuff I have in there. This Calyx here with all my mixed media is working perfect. I love it. This here needs a little bit of work. Again, I got a pile. Whenever I start getting piles on things, I know that something is not working great. For the most part, these are my embellishments. No problems there. That box just needs to be tucked behind. I noticed that my alphabet stickers are starting to accumulate a pile on top and that's usually when that happens there is because the bin is getting full. So I may just need to redistribute stuff around. I like having my mats and stuff underneath here, but it always looks junky. So that is something else that will need to be addressed. I have made a mess of my Alex drawer units and I'm not going to show them to you because there will definitely be videos in the future talking about that. I used some storage pieces from Organize More and it worked well for a bit, but I found they took up too much space and I am maxed out if you can believe it. <laughs> I have stuff everywhere. Okay, let me go show you the closet. Okay, so in the upper areas of the closet, I have a ton of these iris bins. Some are empty. Some have some project stuff in there. I think that can be worked on. This stack here of iris bins works great because they are like a drawer system. So I can easily pull out a bin. I don't have to shift things around. That fits my style very well. I have some bins down at the bottom. I think that might be empty or at the very least need labeling. I'm not happy with this storage here or this. It looks very junky and a lot of them are items that I only use sporadically so I don't think they need to be in prime real estate. This is my card bin. I'm overflowing <laughs> so I need to deal with those too as well. Get some cards in the mail. This here houses my chipboard alphas. I never use them. So I need to assess whether I want to keep them or perhaps come up with a better storage solution for those. And then down at the bottom, I've got a ton of small mini albums and I've got some surplus stuff. Again, I'm not sure if this is the best location for these. Perhaps maybe they should go up into the top of the cabinet or the top of the closet and I can use this for stuff that I access more frequently. And I've got a bin at the floor, which is never a good sign. <laughs> I think that bin is supposed to go in here and this is too full. So red warning flag that needs to be addressed. Let me open the other side. Okay, so for the most part, this closet organization works pretty good for me. All of these here are different collections that I just put in Ziploc bags and I hung off these hangers just to make use of that space. I like being able to flip through things really quickly works very well for me. I've got extra cardstock and some little piles here that need to be addressed. I don't remember what those are and this is like printer paper, that kind of thing. I've got printing supplies. I've got all my Ali Edwards story kits which I need to start working on. Um, I subscribed to that for a year and didn't do anything with them so that's bad on me. <laughs> 
I've got ink refills and stuff down there. Down here is ribbon storage, as well as ultra bowls or other projects. I've got quilting fabric and felt in those drawers. So that is my craft room in a very quick nutshell. Um, I do have some decor on the top of the cabinets or top of the bookshelves. Some that I just put stuff up, but it's not really pretty. <laughs> Let me show you these ones. So that still needs a little bit of work. I'm going to bring you over to my desk and we're going to sit down and talk a little bit more about some of my thoughts and what the challenge is for this week. So to make this a little fun for me, I thought I'd pull out a Traveler's Notebook cover as well as a Traveler's Notebook. This is from Studio Calico. I must have gotten it in a box or it was on sale or something like that. I have a ton of these and I thought it would be fun to use one of these books to kind of document how I'm going to organize in 2021 and kind of gather my thoughts, do some brain dumps, that kind of thing. And if you want to play along with me, I encourage you to grab a notebook of your own or even just some loose paper if that works for you or even your computer. So for this week's topic. I've already shown you my current state of the craft room and so I would encourage you to have a look at your craft room. Just kind of think about your feelings and your thoughts when you look at it so that you can identify what it is that you want to tackle in the coming year. And this is how I ended up documenting mine is this actually this traveler's notebook came with pattern paper which makes it even more fun in my book. I just took some stickers from one of those sticker books and I thought this was appropriate today is the day because today we're going to assess currently where we are at in our craft room, what our thoughts are, that kind of thing. And so that's also why I titled this layout currently. And you'll see I have three sections here. I've got my style, the state of the room, and what I need to work on. These are very general, general, general overreaching ideas. This is not the nitty gritty at this point. What I'm really trying to focus on for myself is how do I feel about my craft room right now? And what do I know about myself? Like how do I organize things? What works for me that I've learned over the past 30 some odd years of crafting? So one of the things I want you to ask yourself is what is your organization style? How would you describe the way you like to organize things? And there's no right or wrong answer to this. I called myself organized chaos. To someone who's a minimalist, if they were to walk into my room, they would probably be extremely overwhelmed by the sheer volume of stuff that I have visibly out there. I like that. I like seeing all the things. I like looking up and seeing uh, my ink pads on the wall. I like seeing bins of stamps. I like seeing my colored cardstock. All of those things really get me excited about crafting and they are jumping off points or inspiration for me. It's organized in that I do have organization systems. Some of them work better than others and I think as you evolve and change and your interests in the world of crafting evolve and change, your organization may have to uh, accommodate that. So for instance, I'm really into paper crafting, but I do other crafts as well. And if my shift, if it were to shift, and those other crafts were to take a bigger role, then obviously I would assign those crafts in different places in my craft room. Does that make sense? I hope so. So I call it organized chaos. Again, it's not chaotic to me really, but for other people they may think it's chaotic because I do have a lot of that visual stimulation. I also know about myself that I craft with abandon. I am not someone who pulls out five things, works on whatever it is I'm working on, and then puts those five things away. It doesn't happen. When I get rolling, I pull out, I craft, I pull out, I craft, I stick stuff on the floor, I stick stuff in bins, and at some point I come up for air <laughs> and I need to put everything back. But because of the way I have started to organize things, usually putting things back is not overwhelming. Sometimes it is, and those are areas that I still need to work on. But for the most part, most things have a home and so go back really quickly and really easily. 
So I just put under my style, I put organized chaos. It was very visual, colorful, because those things are very inspiring to me. And I like to see all my things again, because it's inspiring. And if I don't see something, I forget that I have it. So when I showed you my craft room, most everything was out in the open. I, all my bins are clear for the most part. And I do have some drawer systems and um, I do have closet doors, but very rarely are both of my closet doors closed. I almost always have one open to remind me that I have stuff in the closet as if I could forget. But you know what it is, out of sight, out of mind. The stuff that are in bins that I can't see very easily tend to be very specific in purpose and I remember that they're there because I'm looking for them specifically, if that makes sense. So for instance, all my 3D elements are in there, like my alterables and stuff, because when I decide I'm gonna alter something, I know that that's where they are. It's not an everyday item that I use. All of my uh, fabric is in there because I don't sew every day. And if I decide I'm gonna sew, then I know that that's where that is. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, the state of the room. So I put down, it's mostly organized, it's very full. It is approaching capacity. I do realize that at some point I am not going to have a home for everything. And so while I hate to say this, I am going to need to watch how I spend my money going forward. Or I also need to look at getting rid of stuff, i.e. purging or downsizing, however you want to phrase it. And that actually falls or leads into what I need to work on in the next year. So I basically put down I need to need to work on my purchasing. I need to either limit it or be very strategic in what I do purchase. Uh, those are important aspects of it. Regarding my craft room, I also have pockets in this room that are not utilized as well as they could be. I have a couple cubes that I'm eh, not quite happy with it. I have some empty drawers. I have some empty units um, that that I could use. And so if I'm not going to use them and I could use that space for something else, then that may be something I need to look at. I think my room is maxed out as far as organization goes as well. I don't think I can go too much more vertically. Um, a lot of times that is something that we don't utilize fully, right? We only go to a certain level and then we have a lot of upper space. I think I've maxed it pretty well. I could possibly add another cube shelf on top of one of my cubes of stamps but I would have to then move my TV up and I would also lose some of my decor. Now at this point in time I'm not prepared to forego that so I've decided that the extra space that would allow me is not worth getting rid of those items at this point in time. That doesn't mean in two years from now uh, that my thoughts on that may have changed. So currently, currently, that's my thoughts. So I really have maxed out. I don't have any more floor space to add any more things in here. I've already added one too many carts, um, unless I can find a better way to configure where they're going to be stored. I am at capacity. This is as much storage as I'm going to get out of this room. I did mention that I could possibly purge some things, and there probably are some things in this craft room that I could purge. I have not gone through my stamps in nine years. I have not felt the, the need to purge stamps up until now, and even now I'm still not entirely there. I still have room in my allotted space for stamps. I have not maxed that out. But that being said, I have a lot of stamps that I have never used, or I have um, only used once or twice and if I were to get rid of some of these items I could free up some space so downsize my allotted stamp space to make room for other things so I definitely could could possibly purge there I'm not really feeling in the purging mode at this point so that is not going to be a high strategy on my list right now I think I just need to focus on maximizing what I have, make what's empty or not as efficient more efficient, and then assess where I'm at. So hopefully that makes sense. The other thing I've noticed in my craft room is I'm starting to get piles. I get piles when I don't have homes for things and I need to work on that. So I need to assess why these piles are happening and 
I need to find a home or if I can't find a home does that item need to exist in my craft room. I do often get piles of projects. I, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. If I had more counter space, I would be thrilled, but I have what I have. And that means periodically I am gonna have piles of projects sitting out there, but I'm okay with that because that is temporary. That being said, one of the things I want to work on is I wanna make sure that I deal with those piles more quickly. I tend to let things accumulate until I deem it worthwhile to deal with. So an example are the bins, for instance, of my scrap paper or the bins of purchases. I wait until I have um, a full bin and then I deal with it. The problem is then that becomes a bigger job and I don't always feel like doing that. So I think if I tackle those a little bit more often, that will help that situation. So other things that may be appropriate to you that you may want to consider in your documenting, you know, when you're assessing your craft room, what areas are you proud of? What areas are driving you crazy? Do you look for visual stimulation or do you see visual clutter? So a lot of people would see my room as visual clutter. If so, that means your organization style is going to be different than mine. It doesn't mean that we can't learn from each other or take take things away. It just means that you have to recognize that something that's going to create visual clutter for you will be a problem in the long run and won't be an ideal organization solution for you. You need to be really real with yourself about this and understand who you are and what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. As far as your state of the room goes, you may want to consider what options do you have? I talked about mine. I don't have very many at this point. I am at capacity. So purging, limiting spending, maximizing what I do have are really the options that I need to go down. But for instance, maybe you haven't fully utilized your vertical space and that may be something that you want to consider. Are you good at setting limits? I'm not, typically. Um, I've heard people that say I'm only going to have one bin of stamps and when that is done, I have to get rid of stuff. I'm not good at that. <laughs> that is part of who I am and I understand and realize that. But that does impact how I deal with things. So that's something else to consider. Are you good at setting limits? If you are, then you need to set a system that defines those limits for you and will make your life easier down the road. And just to go back to your style, when you're writing down what it is that your organization style is, consider uh, what you would change if you could. Are you willing to change anything? And by willing to change, I mean deep down, honest, realistic, in your gut, are you willing to make changes? Or is this something that you are going to be content to live with? So I know I am a messy crafter. I would wish I wasn't. <laughs> so I wish I could change that, but deep down I'm not prepared to make the changes that would make that work. So for me, that means I'm prepared to have my craft room be a disaster periodically because I'm busy crafting and I'm prepared that periodically I will have to do a cleanup and restore everything back to order only to have it become messy again. And I'm okay with that. Others of you will not be okay with that. And that's okay. It's just be honest with yourself about who you are and what you're prepared to do when it comes to organization. And it will save you money. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. It'll save you money in the long run and will also make you happier. Okay, so that's it for today. I really hope you join me in this journey um, over the next year that you give some thought about this. Um, I'm not a huge journaler. Uh, in the sense I don't like to talk about my feelings and write all of those things down. But I do think it's good to be a little bit reflective and how fitting as we approach the end of 2020 to be a little bit more reflective on ourselves and how we organize things in our craft room. I hope you enjoy this. I've got a few more topics coming up, so stay tuned. And until next time, happy crafting and happy organizing.